Hello everyone, this is Bilal Khan and you are watching my YouTube channel, The Safety and Compliance Center. I am here to make learning HSC simple, practical and exciting. So let's work together to unlock your potential and build a successful career in health, safety and environment. So today we will uh, discuss over important HSC practices in Saudi Arabia. Whether you are a new HSC professional or uh, you want to learn more. Watch this video to the end and find every step further to do. To begin the session, let's look what exactly HSE means in the Saudi Arabian context. As HSE professional, we actually stand at the front and making safety a part of everyday work, not just for the workers' health and safety, but for the protection of the company's asset and the environmental integrity. So our roles and responsibilities go far beyond checking the boxes, we actually uh, shape the workplace, help the company to prevent incidents and contribute to the long-term business sustainability. When we talk about a compliance, it is not just about avoiding the fines and penalties. It is about doing the right thing, protecting the people, property and the company's reputation. In Saudi Arabia, uh, key industries uh, where HSE uh, plays a vital role, including oil and gas sectors, constructions, manufacturing, and logistics. These sectors are so dynamic and highly risky, where uh, they are heavily regulated and the HSC personnel play a vital role, uh, both the, their role is so essential and highly valued in this company. Well, here we will discuss some regulatory bodies that are, uh, that are responsible for shaping the HSC practices uh, across the kingdom. Uh, if you are working with major clients like Saudi Aramco, Sabic, and Neom, uh, it is important to understand that these uh, the, these uh, clients have their own internal HSC standards and uh, these clients or these organizations uh, expect the contractors and partners to be fully aligned with their HSC protocols and their HSC uh, standards uh, are uh, so stringent and strict which often exceed the kingdom requirement. Uh, the, um, the Ministry of Human Resource and uh, Social Development Authority, uh, this is the central authority or you can say a governmental body which enforce the labor law across the kingdom and ensure the workplace safety regulations are implemented. Uh, GOSI, uh, Government Organization for Social Insurance, maintaining the HSE statistics and monitor the uh, compliance uh, across the industries with the kingdom labor law. Uh, they regulate uh, the medical care for the personnel who injured on the workplace. Uh, the Saudi Food and Drugs Authority uh, is actually um, going to oversee the food safety, the pharmaceutical uh, companies and the medical products uh, to ensure the public health is protected during the production process and during the distribution. The Royal Commission for Jubail and Yambo actually regulates the HSE performance in the industrial cities focusing on the environmental compliance and industrial safety uh, in the industrial uh, cities. Now let's talk about some uh, responsibilities that every HSE professional must be aware of that. Number one is the risk assessment and the hazard identification. It is actually the foundation of uh, a proactive safety. Uh, it is our job to highlight the potential risk before it becomes an incident. Example, it is an unguarded machine, uh, an unguarded uh, power tool like a grinder without a guard, a slippery surface or a poorly uh, stored chemical. So uh, this is the responsibility uh, of a safety uh, professional to uh, highlight, identify this hazard and fix that hazard. When incidents do happen, we don't just record them. We conduct a comprehensive incident investigation and root cause analysis. For example, consider a case that a worker has been injured by uh, a grinder uh, without uh, a safety guard. Uh, so the injury uh, was not just uh, because of the missing guard. It might be a breakdown in the training, it might be a breakdown in the inspection process, or possibly uh, maybe the lack of supervision. So by incident investigation, we actually understand the bigger picture which help to prevent the incident in future. Another key area is an emergency uh, response planning. We don't wait for the emergencies to happen. We actually prepare ourselves in advance. 
or through the plans and through the emergency uh, drills that ensure that everyone knows what to do in the realistic emergency scenario. While conducting regular toolbox talks and the safety inductions are so decisive for keeping safety awareness, especially for the new apply, employees are if the new uh, equipment have been arrived to the workplace. We also conduct internal uh, HSE inspections and audits, making sure that the operations comply with the legal standards and with the best uh, safety practices and the company policy and procedures. And uh, finally, reporting like daily, weekly inspection reports and maintaining the incident uh, logs, uh, which actually helps uh, the management to see the trends, track the performances and make uh, the decisions accordingly. So these responsibilities may seem a routine, but actually it creates a culture of workplace uh, safety. As a new HSC professional, uh, you will soon find that there is often a big gap between the theory and the workplace. So my advice, uh, if you want to reduce this gap, you need to learn from the mentors and uh, review the real uh, life uh, workplace examples. A common challenge is uh, to manage the non-compliance during the working operation just uh, as often due to the worker's habit, uh, the lack of awareness and the resistance uh, to change their behavior. So my advice uh, to the new HSE professional is that the soft skills, uh, which becomes uh, so decisive here like uh, a clear communication, the emotional intelligence, patience and the ability to influence uh, workers' behavior. The, the, these qualities are as important as the technical uh, knowledge is important. In uh, multicultural environments, language barrier is a real case scenario. Uh, many workers speak Urdu, Hindi, Bengali, while documentation is in English, so uh, you need to uh, use translators uh, if it is required uh, in your workplace. The extreme heat in uh, Saudi Arabia adds another layer of difficulty. So proper acclimatization and hydration is, is uh, very essential for your health uh, and it's not just as a policy but it is actually important for the protection of health. Finally, you, uh, you will often feel pressure to prioritize the production over safety. So in those movements, remember, uh, production can be recovered but life uh, uh, cannot be recovered. So your role is to support safe and efficient operations but not at the expense of uh, someone's life and limb. To effectively manage risk at work, HSE professional uses a variety of techniques, uh, tools mm, as a part of their responsibility. Uh, so let's go through some, uh, some of the important ones here. Uh, number one is the job hazard analysis or the job uh, safety analysis. Uh, it is actually a process where we evaluate uh, each step of the task to identify the hazards and implement the control measures uh, accordingly before uh, we begin the work. The permit to work system ensures that high risk work such as hot work, work at height, confined space entry work, they are carried out uh, by obtaining the approval and ensuring uh, that uh, safety measures uh, are in place uh, prior to the start of work. Uh, well, the third one is the lockout and takeout pr procedure. It is actually a safety procedure uh, to use uh, used uh, to ensure that uh, machinery is properly shut down and uh, they, they cannot be accidentally started while maintenance or repairs work are being uh, conducted. The confined space uh, safety is uh, critical when uh, workers enter area with a limited exit and uh, entry uh, such as like uh, tanks, uh, silos, uh, sievers and vessels, it involves uh, strict protocols for the atmospheric test, ventilation, monitoring and uh, emergency uh, rescue procedures. Working at height uh, ensures that uh, workers uh, who perform the task above the ground are properly secured with a fall protection system. And lastly, the uh, fire prevention and the evacuation uh, plans are so essential for preventing fires and ensuring the safe evacuation if uh, the fire incident occurs. So regular uh, emergency drills and uh, clear procedures uh, save lives uh, during these emergencies. 
In addition to the technical skills, uh, your personal and professional behavior is uh, a key uh, to success and to be an effective HSC uh, professional. So number one is uh, to be firm to the standard, but in a respectful way. It is essential to enforce the safety rules, but doing so with respect and leading by example, foster the trust and uh, cooperation on site. Build a strong relationship with the supervisor and workers. When people trust you, they are more likely to take safety seriously and follow your guidance. Maintain through the documentation as uh, it is a saying that if it is not documented, it did not happen. So clear records are uh, essential for compliance, incident investigation, daily safety reports, near miss records, observations reports, and so on. And finally, stay up to date with the latest HSC standards and certifications like courses, NIBOSH, IOSH, OSHA, or the uh, client uh, safety standards or the legal changes. They are so valuable, not just for learning, but also for uh, demonstrating your commitment to safety and to the professional growth. Before we end the session, let's uh, talk about the key values that define a great HSE professional. Number one, always focus on three C's, credentials, the competence and the character. You need to have the right uh, certification, a practical skills and the integrity uh, to do the work in a right manner. Be observant. Uh, safety is all about the detection of hazards before it uh, causes uh, a harm to the environment or it may becomes an incident. So attention to the details. Uh, it, it's crucial no matter it is even a small thing. Uh, so it, it would have a greater impact on the safety culture. You must also be a very uh, strong communicator. Uh, clearly explaining the safety protocols and ensuring that everyone in the workplace understand about the potential risks. In high pressure situations, uh, staying calm is very important. Keep calm, will, uh, it will help you to uh, make better decisions and maintain, your, uh, maintain a control in the emergency situations. Finally, always act uh, with ethics and accountability. Own your decisions and never compromise on safety. Even under pressure, always put safety first. It should be your top priority no matter what is. To support your growth in the HSC field, uh, here is the list of some important resources that you can refer to. The Saudi Aramco uh, construction safety manuals, the general instructions, the safety handbook of Aramco, the Saudi labor law, uh, NIOM standards, SABIC, SHEM standards, and uh, further if you want to look international uh, information uh, sources. So you can visit uh, UKHSC guidelines and the uh, NIBOSH and IOSH OSHA resources. Thanks for watching at the Safety and Compliance Center. Drop your questions in the comment sections and we will uh, get back to you shortly. So this is your channel. Like it and subscribe for more safety content. Stay safe. Stay blessed. Goodbye.